Uh, welcome to LECOM Health Matters. Our guest today is our good friend, dressed in red for the holiday season, Dr. Belinda Steelman, a psychiatrist with LECOM Behavioral Health. Belinda, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for spending time with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. It's the Christmas, it's the holiday season. It's the busy time of the year. I read somewhere that 38% of the people in the world suffer some kind of holiday stress. So my question to start out, is it real? This holiday stress, or is it just something that we've made up? I would honestly say that it is real, especially meeting people that um, have lost loved ones, and then the traditions have been lost in their families. So even things so simple as getting together, or a special recipe, or just a tradition with gift giving, it's lost if the person that was the glue in the family has passed away, and then it's almost like the holiday doesn't have the same meaning. So there families. is something to this holiday stress. I mean, I see people running yes. all over the place, just you know, like you. I went to the mall the other day, and it's crowded, and people are running, and they have their children in tow. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't look like a pleasant experience. So the holiday stress is obviously real. What should people do? What are some tips that we can give people to help them manage that, since it is so very prevalent and it is so very real. Mm -hmm. I would say to try to help them protect themselves from falling into that trap of that urgency, like you say, like, I have to get this gift for this person and I have to do this because mm -hmm. it does lose whatever deeper meaning the holidays have for you, whether it's a spiritual meaning or getting together with family or just having that peace and that time to think and, and contemplate. But all of the urgency and all of the, the stress and, and the, the feeling like you're not going to get enough done, that takes away from that. So it is easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but how about expectations? It seems like everybody's expectations are so large yeah. that in point of fact, you couldn't meet them even if you tried. How do we better manage our expectations? I think especially for adults setting those boundaries. So if it's other family members or um, friends that set the expectations and are putting this external pressure on to have those healthy boundaries and just know like, you know, this is the time that we're going to give. This is the money that we're going to spend. These are the commitments that we're going to make. And we're not going to cross the line and overextend ourselves. So you're suggesting people actually sit down and talk about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, that can't be easy <laughs> conversations to have, but it would seem to me from what you just said that it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to have, well, Toys R Us is no longer here, but you're not going to have a, a living room filled with 150 toys. Exactly, exactly. And, and sit down and try and explain, or how, how do you do that? I mean, for some families, it means picking from a basket and then you can get like one nice gift for mm -hmm. the person that you've chosen, almost like a secret Santa kind of a setup. Um, and for other families, it means that you only have certain people that you're going to buy for. So say anybody that's high school or younger, but we're not going to buy for all of the other. The whole clan. Know, the whole clan. <laughs> the whole clan. Yeah. Or some people they say, okay, we're going to buy for our elderly parents and our own kids and grandkids, but we're, we're not going to do all the nieces and nephews because the families are just growing left and right. Well, we actually, my sister, years ago, had that conversation with mm -hmm. our family because I've got bunches of nieces and nephews. Yeah. You know, to the older ones, I mean, we're fortunate. What do you really need, need anymore? Yeah. Anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we said, if you're, I forget, well, I forget what the limiting line was for the little kids, but if they're under yeah. whatever, you know, the nieces and nephews and yeah. the older ones. And it does make it so much easier mm -hmm. because I don't know, for example, my niece, my lovely niece, Isabella, tells me, Uncle David, don't buy me anything because you have no taste. Just <laughs> give, give me a gift certificate. Yeah. She's 12. Mm -hmm. And wow. it just makes it easier if people sit and talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it seems, so you're, you're suggesting that people should actually just sit and and have a pleasant conversation about what we're going to do and what we're not going to do mm -hmm. and help sort of like define the situation and make it easier. Yeah. What's reasonable for you? What's reasonable for me? I've also heard that starting to buy gift cards, like say even in January. So when you go to the grocery store and pick up a gift card and then that way by December, you've amassed a bunch of different types of gift cards. So it's not like you have that 
money to spend at the beginning of December? This is probably a very unfair question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Oh, sure. How would I know if I'm feeling it? Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I mean, it's a hard question to verbalize, but how would I mm -hmm. internalize it? I'm, I better back off or I'm really feeling holiday stress. What, what are the triggers that I wouldn't? I mean, we were talking earlier. I'm a migraine headache sufferer. I know what those triggers and yes. symptoms are. I can identify those. Mm -hmm. What would I identify to say to myself? It's too much. Yeah. And I would say even it's different for individual people and it's different for individual holidays or seasons of their life. But I would say if it's, if it's causing that internal pressure that it's affecting your sleep, it's affecting your appetite, it's affecting your concentration, it's affecting your joy. You know, if you're a person that usually is able to take things in stride and then all of a sudden it's not like that anymore and you feel pressured and you feel like you're constantly falling behind, um, if that's not your normal baseline and then all of a sudden November, December it is, then yeah, I would say go back to the drawing board and Come up with some different plans and and then it's okay to tell people even if there's pushback like a grandma or a grandpa that says oh no we always buy for everyone and this is what we do and we're not going to change it and yeah and and then just to say well this is this is not something that i can do anymore and i want i want to be a part of the joy and i want to you know be a part of that christmas magic but this is my limit and if people begin to fall into that trap where they really you know don't experience the joy at all, or it becomes mm -hmm. like work. Mm -hmm. Is there a time for a professional to step in? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that there's different layers of professionals too. So, you know, you could go to your church for, for faith-based help. There's professional counselors, psychiatry that we have, depending on the level. It's hard, I would say, if the stress is being experienced like today and then trying to get into a, a clinic, say, within, you know, yes, a day. That's, that's what's that's, hard, I think. Hard. And that's where I would say, you know, for people to really examine what all resources they have. So so family, friends, themselves, their own intelligence, their spiritual life, all of that, and, and pull on all of that regular basis so it doesn't have to hit the, the teapot brimming over. Level. So it's more like that holistic approach. There, yes. there are different levels there. But it's mm -hmm. up to the individual to try to to honestly say to themselves, mm -hmm. you know, I, I shouldn't do all this and I'm yeah. trying to do what I really can't accomplish, which is unrealistic anyways. Mm -hmm. And not to cut from what is meaningful to individual people. So say if reading or taking a walk or working out, praying, whatever is important to that person, if they're starting to cut those things to make time for Christmas pressures, then that's another um, right. That's an interesting point. It's because you're individualizing it to the individual person. What's mm -hmm. it? In other yeah. words, if I understood correctly, I have a certain routine. You have a certain yes. routine. Yes. If I'm compromising that because I'm trying to get A, B, C done, mm -hmm. I'm really jeopardizing myself. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's going to catch up with the individual eventually. And how about, you know, we started off, I, I know, we all know. Uh, my weekend, I have two funerals this weekend of uh, two dear friends who passed. Mm -hmm. And loss at this time of year, I, I think is, from my perspective, I just see that it's so difficult yes. on people, especially that first Christmas through without mom or dad or grandma or grandpa. Mm -hmm. and that's hard. Mm -hmm. How do people deal with that? That is challenging because everyone looks at death in a little bit different Very way. Different. You know, some people are happy that their loved one may not be suffering anymore. But if it was a premature death, then I could imagine, like, say, as people are getting married and babies are being born, and then there's all these Christmas celebrations and people that have that stunted bereavement, they would think, oh, you know, Aunt so and so, she would have loved seeing these babies crawling around or she would have loved hearing this laughter and having that emptiness inside. But I think, I think the biggest thing is that like knowing what the legacy of that person is like an emotional kind of um, intangible legacy, you know, and knowing that this person, the memory of this person can live on or people can live on that you've lost and that new holiday traditions can be made. Well, that's true because there is, you know, the line that, you know, tears do turn to smiles. Yes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, I know in our family, and my, my guess is in yours as well, mm -hmm. that when those discussions come up about what mom or dad did yes. at particular times, of year, they, they, they are wonderful. Oh, the reminiscing. Yeah, They're absolutely. They're wonderful memories. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a wonderful love relationship there, mm -hmm. and that kind of brings it up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this. I remember I lost my three aunts years ago, but they were, they were always my like cook on Christmas, mm -hmm. and it was always a huge fight mm -hmm. between the three. Of them. Yeah, how much stuff did they put in the sauce? Who did what? Mm -hmm. Who didn't do what? <laughs> and they would always forget the salad at the end of it. And so that story <laughs> comes up every year. Yes, yeah. yeah. you know they'd be in that kitchen yelling at one another. Yeah. Uh, but it does take time to get there. Mm -hmm. It does take time. Mm -hmm. And I think people have to verbalize that and understand that. But loss at this time of year just, I think, is very, very, very difficult mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. Talking about it surely can help. Absolutely. Yeah. And how about after the holidays? Is there a post-holiday blues that settles in? Yeah, like a letdown like from a letdown. all of the celebration yeah. and the lights and the music and yeah, all of a sudden second it's the week middle of January, January where it gets yeah. dark. <laughs> and the doldrums, especially in Erie. Especially in Erie. Waiting for spring to come. Yeah. yeah. And how do people face that? How would they what would you suggest that people would do to face that inevitable letdown mm -hmm. come mid January when if you said it's dark, everything is gone, the toys are broken. Now you got to pay the bills. Yeah, exactly. I know all the Christmas. All the Christmas stuff gifts is gone. that you spend, yeah. yeah, money on exactly. How, do, how should they deal with that post-holiday depression? I think part of it is just preparation. Like we we all know it's going to come, so we know November, <laughs> December is the build up, all the pressure and the stress, and we know that there's going to be that letdown. So I think it's internally preparing your heart, your mind, that there is going to be this change. Um, because if we don't prepare ourselves, then the letdown seems so much more prominent, I think. Um, but just having those regular basis, all the self-care, the routine, all of that and keeping it up throughout and maybe even having different traditions or different sports or different things to do like post-holiday before Easter time, say. Well, you said something that was interesting, self-care. Mm -hmm. I, I think for some reason we're hesitant to talk about self-care. Because it sounds selfish. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds selfish. Tell me a little bit about yeah. the and We're supposed to put others before we're, ourselves. Right. Yeah. Right. Tell me a little bit about self-care. Because yeah. I think that's, you said it so well. Self-care, if I'm taking these two hours off because I think I need it, I'm not being selfish. Yeah. It's because I think I need it. Tell us a little bit this about important. the importance of self-care. Yeah. It's like, well, it's like that old adage that you can't save someone who's drowning if you're drowning yourself, you know? So even supporting other people emotionally, that's hard to do if you're not taking care of yourself. And I think there's a big distinction between rest and sleep. So often people think, well, we need to sleep so many hours, but I think we also need to give our, ourselves, our minds and our bodies time to, to just rest. You know, what do you that, mean by that's that? important. Um, I think, again, that's individualized. It's mm -hmm. different for different people, you know. So for some people, they, they like to read. For some people, they like to just snuggle with their pets or, you know, watch TV, watch a movie, um, it just just to, like, decompress. Mm -hmm. that, that that's important, too. But I think that's even harder to give ourselves time for than actual sleeping. Because biologically, we know, okay, our body needs so many hours of sleep. We're going to get the migraines. We're going to feel cranky. We're just not going to have our immune systems well enough if we get less than X amount of hours of sleep that's individualized or if you're not feeling good or whatnot. Um, it's easier, I think, to make ourselves sleep for that, but to actually rest and say, like, say after work to say, you know what, I'm just going to hang out for like an, an hour and just enjoy and not get back on the computer or not get not back on the phone. My iPhone yes, too. check the messages, check the emails, all of that. And just say, you know what? I, I put in a good hard day and, and this is okay because I need to refuel. Well and I think during the holidays that's critically important. And I think I love the way you said it. Self care is not selfish, mm -hmm. especially now. Yeah. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna shut yeah. the phone off or I'm gonna put the phone somewhere yeah. else. I'm not gonna go do all of and that. And it's going to be okay. The work will be there when I turn it back on. It's no <laughs> if it's really, really, really bad, they'll really, really find, they'll find it. find a way. If yeah. they have to. Exactly. But self-care. Mm -hmm. 
is not selfish is a really, I think, important point that you make, that it is important just to sit back and say, I need this time for me to do whatever. I mm-hmm. go to a movie, it might be watch a movie, yeah. it might be go for a walk, yeah. it might be whatever. Mm-hmm. But taking care of me, I'm no good to you yes. if I don't take care of me mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. And that distinction between that's different than sleep yeah. than, than our body needs. Mm-hmm. So if you were going to give one final tip to manage all the Christmas holiday stress, what uh, would it be? Give yourself grace. And what do you mean by that? Like, um, like it's okay if you don't get everything done on your list. It's okay if you don't please everyone. It's okay if you don't meet every single expectation. Give yourself grace. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful final mm-hmm. thought, and that's where we'll stop because that's a profound thought. Give yourself the ability to give yourself some. Mm-hmm. Dr. Stillman, thank you very much for your oh, time. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. This is Monsignor Rubino with Lecom Health. Oh, yeah.